How's it going? So you logged in or clicked this video because you possibly believe that this is going to be a really in-depth uh, instructional video on how to replace this rear main seal on a carrier APU 6012 well it's not going to really have as much detail as you think but I'm going to hit some of the points that I believe you will benefit from and we'll just start from the top and uh, I'll go ahead and finish up with where I am currently and uh, then we'll go ahead and on the back end at how it all turned out so you have your flywheel or you have your, your pulley and then your flywheel five bolts go ahead and remove those but only after you remove the belt let me start with that you want to remove the belt off the generator and the pulley boom take your five bolts out I think they're 14 millimeter next actually they're probably 13 millimeter next you'll come here flywheel it'll be essentially right behind that pulley like so it's got five 14 millimeter bolts here so what am i saying i'm saying that this is how it'll look these two pieces will be inside of there all right take this off Next, work on this. What I did was I, because it will spin, I just stuck a screwdriver in between and I loosened each and every bolt. Then I went on ahead and took them out. And then uh, I got behind it with this pro or pry, pry driver and nudged it on off. Once I got that off, what it reveals is about 14 bolts in this cover here this is attached to the front here I don't know the names of all of this stuff just just bear with me all right I know that this is some sort of a uh, shaft and I know that this must be like uh, what you would consider a timing case cover something like that I don't know exact words for this particular part but there's 14 bolts in it and you're gonna sit here and you're gonna take time to take all 14 bolts out of it and it'll come right off and what it will reveal is a set of gaskets one metal this is part number there's a part number all right so you have that one and you've also got this little one here it's the gasket bearing case gasket now you're going to clean all the crud off of this bearing case cover you may have to take a straight edge razor and lightly go across some of the rough areas clean it up real good and then on the inside of it, you should be able to see already, there's a new oil seal. You can press this one in with your hands. It's not like a car. You can press it in with your hands or if you've got a rubber mallet, a little small rubber mallet, which is what I have over there. I just went and pressed it in as much as I could, as evenly as I could, and then I lightly tapped and got it on there, right? Now, up is indicated I mean, you can't put it on wrong because each, they have a bolt pattern that only matches one way, right? And this little notch here, that's your up indication. Same with this one. Be careful with this one too, because I pulled it out the packet and bent it. And that's because I didn't know it was metal. And then I had to bend it back straight, but it is a metal one and it fits one way. See that little arrow up there? See that little half moon notch? Both of those indicate the direction that this needs to go back onto here. 
So you'll take some brake cleaner and you'll clean all that up and uh, wipe it down. you get the surface prepped. And then you'll go ahead and you'll stick those 14 bolts, starting with the inner one and then the outer one. Or you may do both, I don't know. Depends on you. And you'll torque them down in a star pattern. You don't just go around it and tighten it up, all right? I don't have a torque wrench. I don't have the torque specification. But, uh, you know, this is America. The only reason that the world has any of this stuff is because we built it first. So, so we'll get it together. But um, make sure you clean your surfaces. And uh, I'll show you if it uh, worked out. Oh, by the way, the symptom. Symptom was, as you can see, there's oil. Little specks of oil. And then right here, that's oil. And then there's oil here. And it was draining down the side of this uh, coolant hose. And uh, it was also on the cover here. And how I noticed it is because so much of it was being sprayed up. After I went to the truck wash, I noticed that I had this oil leak right around the Comfort Pro sign. I'm like, where the hell is that coming from? I thought initially maybe something had gotten on the truck. I took the top off. It's covered in oil. So I knew I had a problem. And I was ready to junk the thing because I'm sick of it. But um, I'm also a mechanic. So maybe not one with the vocabulary of other mechanics to be able to name off every single piece. But one that's good enough to get this small repair taken care of. Oh yeah, here's the old gasket. You may have seen it covered in oil, right? It's a gasket, so on one side it should hold oil. Problem was that the oil was leaking through. And uh, as the crankshaft spun, the oil was being spun up. Now, it wasn't a huge leak, but it was enough to cause concern. So, let me get this buttoned up, and I'll show you what it looks like on the back end. Okay, so you see that that uh, case is back on. Got about 14 bolts. Tighten them down in a random sequence, star pattern or whatever. No need to remove the starter. Starter's in the same place it has always been. Didn't loosen it or anything. And I did cheat a little. I've got the... Uh, Milwaukee fuel battery powered ratchet half inch there's the number that's 2558 20 and uh, what you do is you go ahead and just get to work man and it got them down pretty tight. I don't think I need to tighten them, but I will take another half inch actual ratchet and just get a feel for each one to make sure that they're, see, like that one, that one's loose. I didn't catch that. And the rest are tight though. So, you know, double check your work. And then the uh, next step will be to put this flywheel back on. And after the flywheel goes back on, it actually sits this side in there like so. And then we'll put that pulley and that belt back on. I forgot to mention for the generator, which I put on here as well, there's a adjusting bolt and sleeve that helps you adjust the belt. Well, you'll need to loosen the bottom nut down, pull the generator up towards you, 
and remove that belt and the same to put it back on so I got work to do so let me get to it flywheels on this is a balanced uh, item and it's uh it's important that it goes on flat and straight and um, it can be a little bit of a hassle so I was able to put four bolts in and then the fifth bolt didn't fit because it was not absolutely straight so I took the four bolts out and removed this and hit my finger with the weight of this up against this sharp edge here hurt like hell still in pain but uh once i took it down and put it back on it's on and it's straight and it's tight so be careful with this item all right so we got it all buttoned up sprayed it down with some non-flammable brake cleaner wiped it down just letting it air dry got everything buttoned up just like it was I went and got my own belt because the belts that you buy at carrier tend to break a lot so this is an automotive serpentine belt V serpentine belt so is this one and uh, the more you mess with these things the more you'll see the inconsistencies in them I've had to replace since I bought this one from uh, APU, what is that place? There's a place in uh, near Springfield, Missouri. If I can, I'll put it in the description. But uh, they sell used APUs, and uh, I got a bonk one. I'm gonna be quite honest with you. Said it had 6,500 hours. It was a total finance of $5,900. And uh, I've had nothing but problems with it. And uh, they give you like a 60 or 90 day warranty. And I mean, damn near to the month when the warranty ran out, the very first thing that happened was the alternator. Uh, first the belt snapped. When the belt snapped, it sheared a bolt off. And uh, I went and replaced the bolt, the alternator bolt, the lower alternator bolt. That gold one you see there. It was silver. Uh, got it from the APU center. And uh, those little sh shitty ass, cheap ass bolts, they just sheared off left and right, each one. So I went to Lowe's and got a class 10 bolt, which is where the color starts to change. They look more bronze, much stronger tensile strength. And I started replacing everything I replaced I put those bolts in it and that includes the generator it's got a class 10 which is really like a class 12 because I think it it says 10 but it measures two strength sizes up I forget exactly but you could look it up the generator went out the bearings in it so that was an internal issue had to get rid of that that was an $890 replacement the alternator was like 300 the starter went out soon after that teeth were sheared off um, the fan shroud rattling like crazy it's got a high rpm compared to everybody else's so when i turn mine on it sounds like a reefer unit everybody else's pretty much just sounds pretty cool and quiet so yeah when it comes to things like this i would highly suggest that you go ahead and spend the money and get one brand new with a warranty. This is not something that you want to have to continue to have problems with. Because even now, the HVAC doesn't work because the CCU board, which is an electronic board inside of the HVAC box under the bunk, shorted the fuck out, man. So the only thing that works is the generator power and it, the coolant stays warm in the engine. And CCU boards are on back order 
So most of the summer I sweat it and most of the winter, this thing will be useless besides keeping the engine warm and keeping me a, a steady supply of power. And that's the only reason why I replaced this seal because to be quite honest with you, I was ready to take these bolts the hell off of here and remove the entire thing because it's been nothing but a hassle. So just remember, man, if you want to buy one of these, buy one brand new or have a mechanical aptitude so that you can actually fix some of this stuff. And I'm gonna be honest with you, any more problems after that, you know, if this doesn't work or if it does work and the CCU board doesn't work or whatever, man, I'm gonna get rid of it. Cause I've put a lot of money into it on top of what I spent for it. And it's all because I bought a piece of junk from the APU center thinking that it was gonna be the best option for me. Thinking it was gonna help me save fuel, thinking it was gonna help me do this, that, and the other things. And it didn't. It didn't. Still idle the truck. So, lesson learned. I'll get back with you.